<laughs> we out here, episode 62. Game. Look at the guy. I don't know what they're doing. The Lottie symbol right here. We got it on Gabe's head right here. I guess that's what he's putting on for this episode. The basketball, the basketball Illuminati. <laughs> the Kyrie <laughs> Irving. <laughs> all it takes, man. It's what is like Kyrie going on? on <laughs> going good, going good. We had to, sorry for the missed week, Gabe, once again with the internet, but he's got it fixed and he's back. So we're back. What's going on, fellas? We're here back at it again. Another week. More stories of sports. We got to talk about all the sports. Man. Let's talk about the NFL is ramping up because we're uh, we're here. We're about to get into our uh, fantasy football uh, draft coming up soon. Let's go. Yo, when is that again? The NFL. My bad. Know. The draft, guys. No, I was two weeks behind. from now? Listen, man, let's, this this happens year in, year out. Like, I, I miss half the draft. I hear my lunch break trying to try, trying to get some picks and my cue going. Somebody takes my the player I want. Then I get some oh, yeah, random I'm taking picks. Russell this week. That's not going to happen this year. That's not happening this Russell, year. Taking I'm taking Russell. Russell. I'm taking this year. You're going to trade. I'm, I, wanna, I, want, I want three three starters for Russell. <laughs> three starters? <laughs> that man's going to give up, like, I don't even know. I've already been promised nobody's going to take Tua, but anyway. Nobody so wants we'll Tua. Tua. No, no one's <laughs> taking Tua. Yeah, yeah, no one. Guys, listen for those listening out he there. He's going to be on top of Tyreek Hill for sure. Nothing, nothing against Tua, but Gabe was playing Gabe was playing games talking about, uh, you know, you don't know if you want to, you know, do it this season, you know, get into fantasy. And, you know, the only thing he wants is Tua for him to join. We don't want him. You have no worries, First Gabe. round pick. We, first we have, round. We, I want the number one pick. You're going to pick a quarterback in the first round? You, you go ahead and do that. Because I made that mistake Look, a couple years ago and I picked Tom Brady. Ask me how third eye is open. I'll never forget that. I saw that. I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? My third eye is open. You guys are playing tricks. This is a trick. You guys saying, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to. And then as soon as he comes available, you're going to draft him. My third eye is open. You cannot. No, no. It's, it's good. We're here. Uh, anyway, we know who's, we know who's, we know who's getting last place now. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about uh, – News going on in the NFL. Obviously, we're ramping up for the season. Uh, I think we're heading into what our last couple of games, our last game for the preseason. Uh, all their teams are set. Um, big announcement out of Carolina. Baker Mayfield will get his start. Uh, he will be the starting quarterback going forward with the Carolina Panthers. Obviously, game one against the Cleveland Browns. We kind of discussed it earlier. Uh, Julian, uh, Baker Mayfield starter over Sam Darnold. Was that the right decision? Yeah, I mean, anything is better than Sam Darnold. Apparently, wow. like, so there was a there was a big competition going into like this preseason, which everybody was kind of. I don't know if you guys remember that. I think Gabe put it up. Uh, it was a few episodes ago, but that classic photo of like had yeah, like Sam Darnold and ba- Baker Mayfield walking next to each other, and like Baker's trying to like beat him to the field. <laughs> Baker's got something to prove, man. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He's he's tired of all his doubters and everything. Um, I think Sam Darnold's just he's done. Like he's done. Um, I always thought Baker was better than Sam Darnold. That's not saying much, and that's a pretty low bar. But I mean, I, we all knew like they traded for him. Like there was no way that like he wasn't going to play unless Sam Darnold like absolutely lit it up somehow. Right. And but that wasn't going to happen. I mean, shit. We thought last year Sam Darnold might have like had a resurgence. Like, oh, maybe he did need a new change of scenery. But then like after like week three, he just like went back to <laughs> the same old Ghostbuster. Um. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm curious to see how everything goes. Like I said. Carolina's in this like weird limbo where it's like they're, they're not making the playoffs, but they're also not going to be the worst team. And it's like you have nothing really to look forward to unless they surprise everybody. We'll see. But I mean, Gabe, what I know you're the biggest Baker Mayfield fan on the show. You love him. You talk about him. You got he, his jersey. You talk about him on Twitter. Loves the commercials. Yo, what is he? Are, are they going to stop airing that commercial? Please, no, think about please, it. Jesus Christ. I was I was <laughs> done the first two weeks. So I'm like, okay, I get it. <laughs> They're going to switch to Bank of America field. <laughs> the same thing. Um, Baker Mayfield, I kind of saw this. Like, I thought when, you know, they acquired him, that this was going to be the right one. Like, you don't acquire him and then sit on the bench, right? Like I said, I've said this for a while. He is a starter in this league. Maybe he's not a top 30 starter, but he's like a 31 starter. You know, he's the 31st starter in this league. Can so who's, who's 32? Uh, Tua? Tua was 32? Oh, Tua's 32. Whoever's playing, whoever's throwing for the Jets, Zach Wilson, there you go. Um, Zach Wilson, now he's out. Yeah, I know. 
That's what makes it. That's why you can't play. You know, you um, yeah, I kind of saw this writing on the wall that he was probably going to start a job. Obviously, Sam Darnold, just a guy, just a guy. Just Maybe a guy. He had flashes in the beginning with the Jets, but just a guy. So uh, uh, this is a perfect situation for uh, Baker Mayfield. Jojo, I don't know how you feel about the Carolina Panthers. Are you not rooting for them? Do they have a chance? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm rooting guy. for the Panthers at all, but uh, – I mean, hey, first start for Baker, right? Uh, he he came in. He like I said in you know past couple of episodes, he was expected to be the hero of the Browns, man. And they they actually set him up, right? They they put a great team around him. It's just that inconsistency factor with him. Uh, and I wonder if there's less coverage, less media on him, um, on this new team for this fresh start. I really don't think people are gonna really pay attention to them early on in the season. So maybe he could sneak in. A few performances early on, a few wins, kind of like what happened last season with the Panthers, right? They, didn't they start like three and zero? They had a great start, and then who knows what happened? Uh, but hey, man, best of luck to him. They lost yeah. McCaffrey again. <laughs> no McCaffrey, so that's that weapon's not going to be around, and we can really see what he has and see if he's focused, man. Uh, uh, hopefully, he can keep his starting his starting job on this team. Uh, and he hopefully he doesn't drop the ball, man. And, you know, the more I think, like maybe, like if things really click, they can sneak into a wild card, maybe because the NFC doesn't seem super strong. Like the AFC, like the AFC is just stacked. The AFC is going to be very tough. Um, obviously, they're not going to win the con- the division with Tampa, like Tampa, but they could get second, and they could possibly put, like you said, you're going to get a healthy McCaffrey's back. You got DJ Moore. You got um. Uh, oh my God! Why am I drawing a blank on that dude's name? Uh, Robbie Anderson. Um, and um, you got a you got a pretty much a, a new line uh, working together. So we'll see. Like I said, if the defense can step up, I think that's been like kind of lacking for them is the defense aspect and also having a reliable quarterback who can produce. But man, if they can get that Christian McCaffrey from how long ago was it now? What, two years? Two years ago? Three yeah, years ago? It like every year that guy's hurt. So All right, so look, let's, let's take a quick quick glimpse on this schedule, right? right? So they, they open up to the Browns, which they the Browns lost their starting quarterback. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. So they, they, don't, they don't even have their starting quarterback. Deshaun Watson is going to be out for 11 games of that season. Second game of the season, they have the New York. Could be a win. Yeah. It's not, it's yeah, not, it's not too bad. It's, it's, you yeah, never know what you're going to do. Keep going down the schedule because I look at the schedule too. They keep going down to like week nine. Uh, see how yeah. yeah. Got. <laughs> All right. And they they can start like, off three. You got New Orleans. Yeah, New Next. Orleans, again, 50 50 with James Winston out here. You, you don't know if he's going to throw five touchdowns or, or five interceptions. Yeah. But we don't know what Jameson we're gonna get. Oh man, uh, this is yeah. this is a gauntlet right here. There you go. The gauntlet is we're about to hit. You got you got the Cardinals. <laughs> That's a L. You got the 49ers. That's a L. You got the Rams. <laughs> That's a L. You got the Bucks. Oh my God. That's dude, that... <laughs> I didn't that see this so tough. Long. It gets tough oh, to go to week nine. You, you, you can eke out a Atlanta, like a, 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 a Southern rivalry. You can you can eke out an Atlanta win. Then you have the <laughs> Bengals. Tough game right L. there. Back to Atlanta. Look, you know, they could, they could split. Split. They can win the two. They split. Baltimore, Broncos. L. Okay, L. Seahawks. Which you know they're kind of. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, getting their, <laughs> their shit together right now. Steelers rookie quarterback. Well, new quarterback coming in. Big Ben's Dunzo. Lions, Bucks, Saints. This is not the prettiest schedule in the book. You better hope and pray they win the first three games of the season like last Man. year. Uh, at least to get to a steady start and maybe sneak in a couple uh, of wins against those tough opponents. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. They, yeah, I mean, they, 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 every every bad team's bound to get like an upset. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's the NFL, so it's like they're, they're one of those. Somehow they're going to like put together like a win. Somehow, if I had to guess, maybe the Cardinals. I feel like the Cardinals are can be like a team that can like drop the ball. But yeah. Man. I think the, the story that, that, of the Panthers is just NFC like no, West. No, yeah, nobody's expecting much out of the Panthers. So like, if you can just yeah. get any wins, if somehow you can find a way to get to five hundred, like that's I think that's a winning season. 
That's a one. That's a pretty tough schedule. Maybe not the beginning, the first three, four weeks, but it those gets are the pretty tough games. It's, it's pretty Man, tough. Man. If you can get seven wins, seven eight wins, that's that's a plus. I think they're I gonna have to over under is. three and all. They they have to want seven wins. They need they a, win a chance. Yeah. That's, I feel like that's oh, the only yeah. thing. I mean, or, yeah, you can't uh, lose. To, uh, no Deshaun Watson, like no like uh, whatever the Giants are gonna look like. And win. then what you was the third know. team? New Orleans. Who t- uh, Taysom yeah. Hill at tight end is going to be playing? So <laughs> you got you got to steal some games. All right, let's move on to transition to the next topic. Uh, you want to talk about this, Julian? Uh, this USFL MVP uh, kick and punt return with the Cowboys, Cavante Turpin. I, I never heard of this character. Who's this Cavante? Really? Yeah. So you didn't hear about this? So this past weekend in the Cowboys preseason, so this guy was the USL USFL MVP. This past year, um, and he got he signed with the Cowboys as a special team specialist, uh, kick return specialist. And this past preseason, he got a kick return for a TD and a punt return for a TD in one game. Sounds like he's really making a name for himself in the league. Um, his route running was impeccable in those two plays that I saw. There's some great blocking too, but Cowboys might have found themselves a. Uh, uh, kick return specialist, and um, I wanted to get, yeah, and I want to get your guys like thoughts on like, th- do you guys think this is huge for the USFL? Yes, uh, absolutely. Okay. I mean, you got you can share your thoughts too, but when you, well, it all depends on how he performs moving forward, right? You expect him to have a great season, but in terms of having a farm system and getting talent from another area aside from the draft it could be big you never know he could set that standard uh depending on his performance this next season but go ahead Gabe yeah I mean I mean it's fine because like that's one of the things especially that came out of uh, the pandemic with this extra league whatever it's good to get tape for guys to get extra tape right uh my the one guy I remember is PJ Walker who was on he's like the St. Louis no he's on the Cardinals I mean Cardinals Panthers that we're just talking about but he was in the, uh, that league before the. Uh, he was in the XFL. The XFL. Um, so it's it's cool to get these guys like these guys are getting taped that they're you know getting a second chance to be seen you know outside of if you're not like a star player in college, like what other level are you gonna be able to show like oh you're playing against either semi pro professional guys Thanks. guys who are trying to make it to the league so it, it's good it's good for that you know to get extra tape and maybe you get a chance right you get a uh, shooting chance guys are gonna get hurt uh, injuries happen all the time in this league so. Uh, I think it's good in that case. Like, uh, at, at least you know the teams are watching, right? The coaches are watching. There's, there's, yeah. there's people are trying to pull talent and trying to, you know, win in the margins and get guys that can help them. So, um, he's with the Cowboys, so I have zero interest in seeing this guy. But hopefully, he electrifies <laughs> and he makes it through that filter. Maybe he, you know, he's making top tens every week of uh, returns. I don't know if he's the next Devin Hester or whatever. But we'll see. I mean, for him, man, the guy's got a job. He seems like he's excited, and I'm sure the Cowboys fans. Yeah. You know, it's it's cool too because I think I think what's happening is because like in the early two thousands like nineties like that Canada kind of was that ground but Canada's really kind of lost its touch with like players being able to go there and then come back to the NFL. Um, you're not really seeing that much anymore. I think because a lot of the rules have changed so much because Canadian football is now like it's pretty different at the end of the day. So like a lot of players have a hard time adjusting to it. But it seems like now the XFL and the USFL are now coming in here to kind of like fill that need. And I think this isn't going to be the end of it. I think this is I think this is awesome. This is huge for the league. I think now people who are like infatuated with like watching like college football and like looking at recruits and like preparing for the draft. I think this gives them another outlet to kind of look and see a development aspect. Cause I know so many guys and watch people that like solely all they do is just watch for like scouting purposes for the NFL. So they love college football. So like this could be another outlet for that. And then I don't know if you guys saw, but like with the rocks league starting up with the XFL being yeah. rebranded and coming up, they're doing like workouts and tryouts and stuff like that. So now you're going to have two leagues and um, yeah, it's really cool. Hopefully like you said, the, once these leagues kind of get to their feet and get and like teams can build an identity and kind of like a system, then like these systems can like work for other systems in the NFL, kind of like how it does 
for college. Like, you know, the Patriots always get people from Alabama because there's just that link there. And hope maybe that link can happen here. Maybe the quality of football can get better. I think it could be better. Um, so yeah, I think it's sick. I think it's, I think it's really cool. And I, it's cool to see this guy, like actually make a name for himself. And now it's going to like, instead of guys just quitting, maybe they go over there or maybe instead of being a practice squad guy, they can be a starter over there and get real reps so that you you now can kind of like balance it out and figure it out. But yeah, it's pretty sweet. Sorry. Oh, okay. We'll see what this guy is. <laughs> I was no, I'm not kidding. Not again. This is crazy. Our worst nightmare, guys. Sorry, we freaked out for a second. You know? <laughs> I was saying, we'll see what this guy going forward. He's, like I said, he seems very exciting. Kind of tiny guy played at TCU or whatever. But, but uh, <laughs> you know, we'll be collecting all these in the comments. So write all your comments. Just tell me how good the Cowboys are. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck the Cowboys. I'm just talking about the league as a whole. I think it's cool. that we are going to screenshot all the Cowboys fans on the bottom who leave hate comments. Leave them directed to me. Yeah. All right. Obligatory always, cowboy always talk. We had to do. <laughs> always. Uh, let's transition over to the NFC West, I believe. Uh, let's talk about the Seattle Seahawks going forward. Seems like they're in a rebuild this season. Possibly. I think they had just announced Geno Smith was going to, he's still probably the starter and he's going to be playing <laughs> this preseason, his last game. Wow. God, that's a name I hope to never hear again. And then somehow it came back through the airwaves. Geno Smith. I know it's like Halloween, man. It's like zombies coming out of the ground, old <laughs> dead people coming back to life. Gosh, uh, like Julian, Halloween. how do you feel about the Seahawks going forward uh, this season? Oh, like, just end it, man. Just, just. I know you don't want to fire Pete Carroll, but Pete Carroll's at an eight. He's not. He's not there for a rebuild, man. This guy's like seventy-two or seventy-three or something like that. And you want to like by the time a rebuild could take like three to four years, three years if you can do it fast. I think you just you got to start fresh. You got to hit the apps. I know they already kind of did, but like I mean, you paid all this money to Metcalf, which I'm surprised he ended up staying. It's just like I think he's gonna. I mean, unless there's a deal that he just they he that they just couldn't, he couldn't like pass up. It's just like, man, that, that team is in shambles. They had a good run, you know, what was it? Like 10 years. They had a, they had a solid 10 year run, run. but like everything, it, it must come to an end. They did have one of the longer runs in our generation for sure. Um, I can't think of too many other teams that were able to sustain success for that long, but, um, like all good things, it must come to an end, and it's ending with Geno Smith in your backfield. So, so a former Jet. Jojo, uh, how do you yeah. feel about uh, your week one? Because they're going to be playing uh, uh, Denver week one going for Seahawks. Revenge game. Sounds like we have a lot of revenge games going on with this schedule. I don't know if it was uh, strategically yeah. be planned and set out, but hey, NFL's doing a good job to get their viewers home. Huh? I mean, I, I feel pretty confident. Who who do we really have to worry about on this team? Uh, our our Geno Smith, starter, uh, Drew Locke, Team Metcalf, <laughs> and DK. <laughs> that connection is gonna go so crazy. Uh, I feel very confident, man. Like I said, always we got on the core. We got a, we got the quarterback we need that I we we're gonna get. We were gonna get a quarterback, and we got it. And it's it's, it's the ball of the Seahawks, but it's a new uh, it's a new rise for the Broncos here. So. Uh, matchup wise, yeah. play style wise, coaching wise, I think we got it in the bag. Obviously, nothing's ever guaranteed, but that's that's a good uh, that's a good week one game. You know what I mean? And Russell Wilson could get that chip off his shoulder against his old team and and just bury that, and then he could focus on finally being a, a Bronco, get it right out the way. Yeah. Gabe, so is it is it settled that Drew that Geno Smith's playing over Drew Locke? Yes. Well, sure. Gino, Damn, that tells you what he really thinks good. of Drew Locke. No, no, hold on. Gino was named the starter of the final preseason game, but they stated that Drew Locke oh. will be playing a lot throughout the season. Okay. So I'm about to say, man, that speaks volumes about Drew Locke. This yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But in Gino's oh, we don't head. we don't know for week one yet, but as far as the last uh, preseason game, Gino was named the starter. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this is another situation, too, with the Seahawks. Like, 
nobody's expecting anything, especially the uh, really tough division in the NFC West. Like nobody's expecting. If you can split half of your season, they, I look at you know, go look at your schedule again. They have to play the Chargers. They have to play the Rams twice. They got to play. You know, I mean, they got to play Denver. They got to play. They got to play a tough schedule. So like nobody expecting anything out of out of, out of the uh, Seahawks. Probably uh, they should hit the hard. We'll see as the season goes forward. You never know what. Hey, uh, listen, real quick. Cool. What Julian asked why Metcalf didn't leave, man. Right now, I think these young guys are more worried about their guaranteed money and why their value is at its highest based on their performance. And they're going to stick to where they, they're going to get paid, regardless of if they're going to have a winning season or not. Uh, that's why well, I feel I'm talking about if they can get the stats. I mean, if they can get those consistent, and, like. Yeah. I think you need to sell tickets too, right? Because if you get rid of you get rid of Metcalf, you get rid of you know all these premier players, it's like who's gonna come watch a game, right? Hey, it's the twelfth man. They'll be fine. They have the record for the loudest stadium in NFL history. They'll yeah, be fine. They'll be wow. loud, quiet. It's gonna be real quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, quiet. nobody's expecting. We'll see week one. I'm sure. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk. Jojo's gonna talk about all the highlights that uh, Russell did with his former team. Uh, but let's talk about the Bengals. The Bengals season mm. going forward, uh, obviously uh, coming off a Super Bowl appearance. Uh, it seems like they were plugging holes this offseason going forward. Do you kind of expect them? Uh, I'll go to JoJo. What do you, what do you expect out of uh, the Bengals going forward this season? you think they can make it <laughs> The one thing I expect, and I hope they actually do it, is get a damn O-line for your boy because – the potential, the potential of the Bengals if they get not the best O line. We're talking just a decent, a decent O line for for that for that quarterback man. Because him and Jamar Chase is gonna go crazy. Uh, and I feel like if they make that one adjustment, obviously there's other things you could adjust, right? No team is perfect, but homeboy made it to the Super Bowl getting sacked 15 times a game, which is <laughs> unrealistic like how the hell does that happen we don't we don't know but if you cut that down to even four four sacks three four sacks man with great protection knows who, who yeah. knows like i know like this offseason they brought in like three guys and from what i've been seeing out of camp apparently they've been looking pretty solid so it should be much improved i mean swapping out three out of the five guys should make a big difference um and the guys they kept were the guys that supposedly played pretty well for them obviously it's not gonna be no like i don't know like what cowboys o-line has the best line right now i'm not sure who has the best line on top of my head but yeah, I mean, like Judge says, if I mean, shit, if you can average like two sacks a game, like <laughs> that, that could be that'd be great, that'd be huge. Um, but yeah, I mean, can they go back to the Super Bowl? That's gonna be tough. Um, not because of them, like I said, the team just got better. I think they added to defense, they added to their O line, they already had a ton of weapons. It's just a matter of like. Man, there's so many other good teams that are like on the rise right now that it will be tough. It will be tough. They're still my favorites to win the division. We'll see what Lamar Jackson can do, can say something about it. Obviously, Cleveland's not going to get there because Deshaun Watson's gone. And then Steelers got a rookie who actually was playing pretty well. I saw him because they played against the Jags. Kenny Pickett, he actually looks pretty decent. But either way, I mean, there's, this, it's the Bengals division. They, they should win it, um, like I said, unless – the bank, the Ravens have something to say about it, but they have yeah. the potential. They're still a comp- they're still a contender, especially since they got better. They made it with what they had. I mean, dude got sacked seven times against the Titans, and somehow won that game somehow. <laughs> so, and and going forward, like look, projecting their their season, the first they have a bye week in week ten, so they they have potential to like win a lot of games those first nine weeks. Um, you know, let I me see the schedule. Win, I'm actually, curious. Win a lot of games. So they play Pittsburgh at Dallas at New York Jets at Miami uh, versus Miami, Easy also dumb. New Orleans, Atlanta, Cleveland, and Carolina. So they got. I mean, I'm not. You know, it's not some, the toughest. It's pretty it's easy. It's pretty middle of the road. So you know, coming out this first week, they should definitely come out in the positive. Like they should be. You know, and they had a tough schedule last year. Yeah, two or three losses maybe out of those nine. Maybe the you know potential teams that could. Uh, you know, maybe my Dolphins can beat them up, but. Uh, uh, we'll see, What's man. I, I expect them to come out of the division. Um, I'll, I'll, I will see. You know, we should talk about it later, like how the playoffs are going to shake out. But I definitely a reason why they shouldn't be able to 
go to the playoffs. Yeah, it, it's pretty favorable, favorable schedule. So, so uh, let's transition over to uh, let's go northwest to Wisconsin, Green Bay. Let's talk about Aaron Rodgers. Northwest. Oh, sorry, the North, That's know, Midwest. Midwest. Oh, Midwest. Midwest. <laughs> Northwest to Wisconsin. Oh, like, okay, Northwest of fucking. You took us Florida, all the way to dude. Seattle. Like, <laughs> we're, we're in Oregon. We're, in we're the penis of Florida. All right. Um, <laughs> the United States. All right. Anyways, let's go over to Wisconsin, Green Bay. Stop laughing. Wisconsin, Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers got a lot to say about his wide receivers. He said, if they don't play hard, then they won't play. Aaron Rodgers. Any feelings on... Aaron Rodgers talking up or talking down his wide receivers. Uh, I mean, I mean, we kind of saw this coming. Like when Devontae left, we're like, yo, who is he going to throw to? Lazard? That dude's in number three, number two at best. Like they they have like no weapons. Like obviously got Aaron Jones out of the backfield. So unless they plan on running the ball with AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones a ton, like who is he supposed to throw to? And I mean, I'm going to get your guys' thoughts on this. Do you think Aaron Rodgers has a say in like roster cuts and like who should be starting and who shouldn't be when it comes out of like the wide receiver room or like the offense as a whole? Because obviously he stayed for a reason. Maybe put some tinfoil, put a tinfoil hat on, like maybe just because he's going to get more control. The, the Luminati, <laughs> maybe get some more control in like roster decisions. Um, but I, I mean, mean, that's kind of that's kind of hard to say because w- w- wasn't there a lot of friction with him making decisions, like in general? Well, game that's why, uh, like, uh, you know, gameplay decisions. He had a lot of friction with Mike McCarthy about gameplay. Like he would just and Mike McCarthy would have known just audible all the way off. But it's reasonable. You're an MVP. You know, multiple time MVP. You're a Super Bowl champion. You're one but of the do they treat players. him like Tom Brady over there? That is the question. I feel like with this past summer, I feel like that is the case, right? Because in order for him to keep Aaron Rodgers, they had to get rid of Devontae Adams, right? Because the money wasn't going to work. They need to be over over the budget, right? You can't keep both. I don't see how. So, so that's weird. It's like, oh, you know, I should, I deserve to get paid more. Pay me more money. Um, and they do, and then it's like, well, how much do you have left over for other players, right? We hear this all the time where players contract, you know, Tom Brady restructured like two or three times with the Patriots to to keep players or to have money available that they can give them talent and, and sign guys. Um, so it's like, this is what you asked for, right? This is like, uh, we'll talk about it later. This is like a KD situation. Like, this is the situation you wanted. You wanted to get paid more. You said local. Uh, as long as I'm, I got the money. I'm happy, and so this is this is a team that you wanted to stick with, and now this is, this but is your team essentially. My thing though, it's like, how could they not afford? Also, though, there's no one else on that team that's asking for a ton of money. Like that's <laughs> what I'm like. They gotta have some space left over. Obviously, I know Aaron Jones got a decently sized contract, but he's a running back at the end of the day, and I think it was only thirty three million or something like that for like three years. So it's like. What could they possibly – obviously, Green Bay has never been known to make splashes in the free agent market. They, they're just known to be like built through the draft, build the system. But I'm like – I mean, this is the whole reason why Aaron Rodgers has been pissed off this whole time, like throughout these past couple of years. And I had a feeling when I saw Devontae Adams, it was like, this is just going to make the situation worse. The money didn't yeah. make a difference. It's like this is just going to make it so much worse. But I mean, do you think he has the right to be like, no, nah, he's he's out. No, nah, he 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 needs to I mean, go. Yeah. At, no, at this he, point, uh, with his leadership and his stature and his time, you know, within back to back MVP. Region, like, bro, give, give this man a say. I don't know if they are, or they're not. But I, that's you know to radiate the question at the beginning. Like, does he get the Tom Brady treatment? Like, does he? Because he had all that friction there. Yeah, they gave him the money, but is that shut up money? Is that like, hey, we're, we're going to pay you all this, but we're still making the big calls out here. Like, yeah, we're giving you your max contract. So with the money, does the respect come with it as well? Like, who knows? You know, like, they just, like, again, he doesn't have any weapons. So this, you know, is, this is the best. Like, like I said, this is but I don't team. think the money was the thing, though, because he already was like the highest paid quarterback throughout most of his career. Like he signed a contract, what, like five years ago or something where that made him like a shit ton of money. So it's like, why not go somewhere that 
could win like i don't know or like at least add people but man that just goes against like what's that dude what's the gm's name gundakoots gun gun something he has a, a weird name i can't think of but like dude i don't, I don't know like it's i do green i mean green bay makes the playoffs because the division's so bad yeah I was saying, the, Aaron Rodgers still makes them relevant. If Aaron Rodgers is not on that team, are you picking them to be a dominant? Maybe they Unless should. Minnesota can turn their shit around. That's the only team that's really fighting, I would say. Detroit's yeah. definitely not, and neither is Chicago. Aaron Rodgers is the only one making that relevant. And, you know, this team made moves that he wanted. He, he was crying about Randall Cobb, which nobody even cared about. Like, I mean, he was on, <laughs> he was on the Cowboys at the time. Bro. He was like, I need Randall Cobb. I need Randall Cobb. They got no, Randall he's on Cobb. the Texans. They got rid of Cobb. They got rid of Devontae. This is the world that we going on now. He's divorced. He's saying he Aaron Rodgers now he smokes ayahuasca. I don't know. He puts crack up his butt. I don't know what he does. He's a weird. He's a weird guy. He's getting paid a lot of money. Guess what? He's still making. He, like I said, he still makes the Packers relevant. I still expect him to dominate. But if he wasn't on the Packers, I wouldn't be picking the Packers. Again. So what you're telling me is that I should take Randall Cobb in my fantasy team. Yeah, man. A lot of, a lot of guys. Hidden gem. Let me, let me write that down. Let me, Hidden gem. Let me, <laughs> sleeper pick. Sleeper. Let, me write, let me write that down. First round pick. Randall Cobb. Cobb. We don't even know if he's still on that team. He might yeah. not even be on there. Second. He, <laughs> he is. Be my second. He is. Oh, they yeah, do got best, Sammy Watkins. I forgot about that. Their best receiver is probably Tanya, but they don't really use him on the pass. Well, Lazard Watkins. Yeah, I mean, he's Cobb. a blocking tight end. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, we'll see going forward. I'm sure that the Packers will do just fine this year. Um, <laughs> so Aaron Rodgers, whatever. Uh, let's talk about – I want to talk about the biggest story that happened this week. It was a, a game against the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, actually, the Giants' first-round passer, uh, pass rusher, Kayvon Thibodeau, avoided major injury. Uh, they said uh, he had an MRI on his knee. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video of this Damn. one. It was like a low block. Yeah, I saw it, yeah. And the guy went pretty low. Kayvon planted his foot. Uh, apparently, uh, his ACL is intact, uh, but he does have an injury. They're keeping him out. They're keeping hopes for a week one or a week two debut. But right now, he's out with the injury in the ACL. Um, I'm JoJo, I, did you see the video, JoJo, of this block? No, I it's haven't. Bad. I got I got to look that up. Was it bad? The chop block? Yeah, a lot of people saying the discussion, that, is this dirty? Is this illegal? Um, I would say it's pretty low, but from what all the experts, all the people, football people are saying, is like this is a pretty normal block. Like, pretty if you common. See right? going, yeah, if you see somebody's going low for you, apparently you're supposed to protect yourself. Like, if they're going for the knee, but um, yeah, uh, I mean, it's the way the NFL has been doing. Like, you can't hit high, you can't hit like. I mean, that's why recently we've seen a lot of, um, you know, injuries because people going low because you can't go high no more because the heads up thing. Yeah, I, Julian, how do you feel about it in general? Because I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of the idea of like, I can see how people say it's dirty, but also like protect yourself out there, right? Because you're a million dollar athlete, you're a million dollar machine. Like protect your body. Um, you know, if that's if, if people are saying this is standard protocol, this is standard operating procedure for pass block. I just, Julian, I just watched it again. That's too fucking low. That's that's dirty. That's wow. too low. He had he had a wide open side. He could have hit him in the hip or like the side. He purposely went low and bent the hell out of his leg. I'm, I can send you the link so JoJo could take a look at it, it too. Yeah, I can't pull it up, oh, but um, yeah. but so I don't know the player. I haven't seen it yet. But do you think instances like this in the NFL when a guy is going for a tackle and they probably thinking there's no way in hell I'm gonna get this man down going in the mid area that they have no choice but to go low. Well, if you watch if you watch the play, uh, the quarterbacks are running to the side, the opposite direction. So all he needed to do is set a pick. He just needed to be there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it it wasn't like it was straight up. Like take a look at it. It he just needed to be there because he hands the ball off, and the running back would have already been gone. He wouldn't have gotten him. He just needs to get in the way, essentially. And I think a nice little – I mean, at the end of the day, you're a tight end. You're a tight end. You're a blocker. Like, you should be able to block a pass rusher at the end of the day. You shouldn't have to go low like that. Like, it's your job to do that. You should be able to handle that. I don't – at the end of the day, this guy's a rookie too. So, it's like well, 
I mean, that's not his job to decide who's a rookie, who's not a rookie, who should I hit hard, who should. No, I what I'm saying is like no, no. What I'm saying is he's a rookie, so it's like he's not going to be like the most like dominant pass rusher right off the gate. Like you should be able to handle that block. Like you should be able to handle it. If you if you look at the article, JoJo, and you scroll down, there's a a Warren Sharp tweet, and you just click play on it, you'll see it. It's like five seconds, super short. Warren Sharp. Yeah. So. I, I think I'm of the camp. I'm I'm gonna go opposite, Julian. I think I'm of the camp that like you gotta protect yourself. Like, Look, it was clean by a rule standpoint. It was clean by a rule standpoint. But was the play um, but dirty? It, it was it was dirty. Dude. Like he had no need to go that low. Like that's really fucking low. Like that. Who does that? Like I don't like it. Just like like you watch it and it just looks awkward. Like that doesn't look natural. Joe, did you see it? No, I'm not there yet. But I'll put I'll yeah. put the. Uh, I, it's right at the top of the the link I sent you at the private chat. If you if you click on it, it's it. You no, just I'm on the big page, but there's a bunch of ads jumping on here. You know what? I don't know yeah. what you're trying to hack my computer or something here. But uh, uh, here, Joe, Joe, Gabe sent another link in there because uh, I really want to get your thoughts on that. But, oh, this isn't a good video. You oh, got to look at the one I sent. Let's if you look at the one I sent, it's a, it's a it's a better angle, but man, that I don't know, Gabe. I uh, like what do you? So you're so you're basically saying that was clean, that was good. I'm not. I'm saying apparently by the rules and what everybody says, this is like yeah. standard. This is how they block. The I agree. Now, maybe you say he's going for the upper thigh, right? He's going. Maybe he's not going at the knee. He's going above the knee for the upper thigh. Expected because he was expecting the guy to go low with him. Here, actually, I can do this for you, Jojo. Give me a I'm second. I'm gonna just Google it on my phone right now, real quick. Let me see that. So, no, nah, I got you right here. So pretty uh, but, much, um, but I mean, it's actually pretty. I mean, I mean, he's still gonna be able to make it, you know, for the rest for the season. To, you know, some kind of major surgery. Uh, probably just uh, healing. Yeah, no, no, uh, click that. That's that's perfect for you. Oh, I got it here. I got it here. I got it here. I got it here. Let me, so, let, me um, let me run that back. Wow, that that's super low. Wow. Are you the oh, angle man. like behind Thibodeau? Is it the angle right, from the sideline? So check, check this game. How do you protect that? Not that Jojo, real video. quick. How, how yeah. what angle is it from? Is it from the sideline? From the is it the one I sent? Like it's like to his back, right? Like you're looking at Thibodeau's yeah, back. I'm, lo- I'm looking at his back. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at his yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. then we got the same thing. And you all see right, he so like the helmet going towards the hip and he dips all the way down. You can't protect yeah. that. What do you what do you do at that point? You're protecting the ball. So you're thinking that they're gonna go at least towards your waist and towards the ball. And then once they drop down, it's not like you you've gathered enough speed to jump over someone or, or anything like that was well i think he was already was, to his side he yeah. was to his side so he, he would have had to turn around but since he was to his side he was able to well, come like that like right well, uh, well i think he got cut up was he planted his foot right he wasn't like bouncing around like usually you're supposed to anticipate if the guy's gonna go inside out outside if the ball coming your way but if you're, you see a blocker you want to shed to the side do like a like a what do you call it, the bull the bull rider he just fucking shut him to the side but yeah. he got injured because he planted his foot and obviously his head is coming down towards his knee he planted his foot obviously you can get a bending or something. well they sold the play they sold the play they got him on the play that that and that's what you do like they thought he was going one way but he didn't and and then the blocker that blocker's assignment is literally just like kind of set a pick like because the running back's the already going to be gone like it's not like you're going to have to yeah. Yeah, so Joe, do you think uh, it's you said it's dirty? From that angle, it, it kind of looked like it. Like it, it looked like you could have avoided it. Instead of going head on with the contact, the waist area, um, he dipped low with all that weight and just fell on his leg, which it, the guy wasn't going anywhere, first of all. Like it was no need for all that. If, or if anything, wrap him up. You kind of just threw your shoulder and all your weight and wrap just wrap his thigh. Yeah, I mean that's all you gotta do is like yeah. yeah. But so, I mean, this is I guess this is kind of the side effects of like when you take away like you can't hit high no more. Like I mean, you hear it from defenders all the time. It's like it's tough because you have such a small little window to kind of hit people. Um, 
So it makes it tough. But at the same time, like that's like, you, you, it's like an unwritten rule, man. Like, yeah. you, like, Listen, like just and, any I'm not, sport. and I'm not saying that play was in, intentional, you know, maybe, you know, obviously wasn't trying to do it on purpose. You're never trying to injure somebody, but there's, there were a couple ways to avoid it. And that's, and that's for sure. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that for, for that, for that taco. Avoid it. Like Thibodeau avoid the hit or like no, the guy no, no. avoiding going. The guy out. avoiding the way he tackled him. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. there were a million other ways you could have tackled them. So let's we'll yeah. see. Yeah. I mean, obviously, this is probably the biggest news. This guy's the biggest uh, uh, prospects coming out of the Giants. But, uh, yeah, he was huge him. out of Oregon. Yeah, week two, hopefully we'll see him come out. Hopefully. Maybe he, he learns a lesson. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe uh, the NFL season. We'll see going forward. Uh, let's transition over to basketball real quick. Let's talk about the biggest news of the summer. The never-ending uh, story. Multiple year champion, OG Hall of Famer, comes back to his team. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Udonis Haslam, resigns with the Heat, multiple year. Um, uh, Julian, your thoughts on Udonis Haslam signing? Respect. Biggest signing Respect. Of the- Respect. Dude, why? Just why? Why do they keep on doing this? Why <laughs> not? Is the question, why not? <laughs> Why do they keep? I mean, make him a culture back, coach. Folks. Just the make him a coach. Hey, hey, listen, hot take, <laughs> make him hot a fan. Take. Make him a fan ambassador, or what is it? What is Drake? A fucking, like, fan um, ambassador. Wow. Yeah, is, is that what you look at him as? You, you just Bro, why are you wasting fan? a spot on a man who literally can't play no more? Like his body's shot. Like his body. His body's li- like what? We're just gonna like bring back like Jordan just to have him on the fucking bench? Like. I mean, <laughs> bring Listen, back Wade too. We'll bring hot back. take. He is Miami Heat culture. What if that is the key? That, that is. I'm not saying every look at Gabe shirt right there. That's Udonis Haslam's face right there. Look, I got that's, the Heat. I got Heat year on face. too. <laughs> but look, yeah, yeah. Just make him a coach. Like, why are you keep, like just keep him in the? Or you can keep him in the organization. Maybe give him a front office role. I don't know. Like, make him a coach, front office role. Like, why are you wasting a spot on a – how old is he? 40? 41? Yeah. <laughs> Entering his 20th season this year. 20th season or probably yeah. play. And I, and I, I oh, you're going to pay why, a 40-year-old person. He's going to you know, play the most important another season. season. This, yeah. I think this is it. This is the current call. This is – He wants one more chip. That's what I do. The last dance. He's going to finish seasons with the Heat. This man they were, they were one game away from the finals. And he believes they can get there. He wants to get there one more time. Just this one man is forty-two time. Let's. Nobody saying anything about Tom Brady being forty-eight years old. A different sport. I know. I know. Tom Brady could actually <laughs> and a play different player. And a di- and a different player. Uh, Udonis Haslam is not even remotely close to what Tom Brady was in his sport. <laughs> like, here's the thing. I feel like we've been saying this. <laughs> For the last four or five seasons, every year that he's come back, so it's honestly not a surprise at this point. Um, he is 2002, yeah, man. Was but, when he what, was I heard, what I heard is that the players actually want him back too. Like he's a key part in that locker room. So, look, like I said, I'm not against having him around the team yeah, yeah. and the organization. I love Donis Haslam. He is Heat culture. But like, why are you taking your roster spot? For him, it just baffles me. Like I don't get it. Why you're wasting a roster spot when he can right. still be there? He could still be the voice of the people, like he of the team. He, he he could he could actually. I'm pretty sure they can just take an extra chair out of that locker room and just put it there and actually have no position at all. Just have, him, just, have him sit there. <laughs> just have him sit there. Yo, I'm, I imagine they trade him for KD. Like a part of a trade back wow. package to end his career. <laughs> so he knows what it feels hey, like. Transition. Speaking of KD, obviously the biggest news, obviously, coming into the season. KD, where's KD going to go? KD going to go. Uh, the most recent news is that they had a meeting in LA. I think KD was in uh, some kind of league. He's over there training in LA. Uh, they had a meeting uh, with Steve Nash, Joe Sy, and Sean Marks. Uh, they met with Rich Kleiman. And Another KD. meeting? You know, I find a situation. And they decided so to move funny, forward bro. with the partnership. So they say KD is going to stay there moving forward with the partnership going forward this year. 
Jojo, do you believe this is true? Do you believe KD is all right now? He, Bro, he listen, had all this shit to say, and now listen, he's man. he's okay with the team partnership. Listen. We you you can't bring up KD without bringing up LeBron, and I tell you this why this is the LeBron effect. This is the listen. Every all these major players are trying to you know trying to control BGMs. the narrative and you know be in control of their own destinies, and it's just not gonna work. I love KD. You're not LeBron. You can't be coming out stating you want to leave because of this coach. I want this player. I want that player. We have three superstars. You're not going and to Could the you even say that that even really worked for LeBron at the same time? It didn't even I mean, really work for him either. So it's like. I'm just saying, but as we know, right, LeBron, yes, he does have a little control of his own narrative in the league and KD's trying to do it right now and you're just causing a big ass mess bro like what what's going on at this point you got the big three you wanted you got the players you wanted one left boohoo didn't work out all right Kyrie's still there you guys get swept um uh, now you don't like the coach now you're complaining the front office you want this and that and you know, you, you, you're making all these statements and now, you know, for free agency, you got all these players lined up waiting on this big decision for Kevin Durant to happen when nothing even happened. So that's a lot of lost opportunity for these other players on the back burner on these deals because KD just was like, you know what? OK, we're good now. Do you think it's it reached its breaking point with like players trying to take too much control? Like, do you think it's like kind of like. It, it could sure. happen, and and listen, like I get it. You have because it's, it's starting players. to look bad every time a player. Do, I mean, it's just unhappy. I know, I know, good. I know. I mean, obviously, Lakers won one championship, but outside of that year, it hasn't looked good. It hasn't been good at all. That whole experiment of him trying to be a GM has not been great. And then we look at Brooklyn. This whole experiment of like them trying to like do kind of a similar thing is not working. And I, it kind of seems like it's hit a, a, a breaking. I, like, who else would do this now? Because it keeps on like not working out. And but then you look at the teams that are successful, and then the team's not doing that. So, yeah. it, you know, and it's it's funny because KD made that decision to leave Golden State. You know, thinking, all right, I got my rings out of the way. Um, all this drama will leave. You know, I can start fresh you know, with the, my own core and become a champion somewhere else. And now you're just in even more problems in Brooklyn. And it's sad to say, because they set you up, man. I, what else did you want from them? Like, I don't understand. And now you're unhappy. You had two bad seasons with them. Now you're ready to go to where to ruin chemistry in another team, like to make more demands and, you know, failed experiments. And we know you're a great player, like once in a generation, but who, who else, can you get like I don't think it's all star talent now at this point that he's gonna need like you just gonna have to ball out with some good chemistry man and trust in good coaching to get right back to the finals. This is what we told. This is what me and Gabe were. T- this is what me and Gabe were talking about on one of the episodes you were gone. Was like it's like it's probably your best situation to stay there. One, you have no leverage. You can't go that this idea that they came to a partnership is bullshit. He had nowhere. He had no other option. And then secondly, if he were to go somewhere, the amount of value that team would have to give up to get you. Exactly. That team's not going to be good. You're losing the like, entire team to acquire him. So what do you really have there? Like if it's that team, team right at now. the end of the day, it might be worse. Like you get rid of all those supporting elements and then you just bring in one guy. It is, I don't know, man. Like, like I said, like I, I, I'm over the, the KD thing The dude just, just shut up and just play, man. Like it, you're causing this whole scene and this whole mess and it's not working out. And you, you gotta live with, like Gabe always says, you gotta live with what you signed with. Hey, man. That's the situation. I feel like this is still going to be an ongoing story going forward, right? The beginning of the season. We'll see, especially when it comes up to trade deadline time, when uh, a lot of these contracts are open for trades. Like they're, they're showing yeah. like uh, dates, like in October and uh, the trade deadline. February. So when players, more other players become available, more than the players that are available now, because it seems like a lot of teams are signed up and locked up until 
uh, these dates pass through. So I think it's still going to be a story going forward. We'll see if he actually, you know, I think he's going to play well, but we'll see how actually agitated and how. I mean, yo, you're going to have Kyrie full time now in the regular season. So you're going to have Kyrie full time. Stephen yeah. A. Smith, PC said uh, on his show that he spoke to Ben Simmons directly, right? They got caught up. They saw each other. Uh, I don't know if it was at an event in the city, whatever. And he said Ben's ready to play. He's, he's room for him now. So if, if Ben turns out great, you got Kyrie full time at home. That chemistry could be there. That could be a new big three. So I don't know why he was oh. trying to escape so Jojo, soon. Jojo, let me... Let me know if you're in on this bet. Me and Gabe made a bet about Ben Simmons. If Ben Simmons over under three years when he'll be in Europe. Wow. <laughs> Gabe has the under. Wow. Yeah. Gabe, under Gabe three years. I don't think he wants to play basketball. So he'll be in Europe. Basketball. That's NBA, tough, man. We'll see. Uh, wow. <laughs> It's it's hard to say honestly because I think I'm borderline. Played... I, I haven't made a decision. I'm thinking under though. I'm think, I'm thinking two years and he's out. You know what? Check this. Uh, by All Star break, I'll get on that bet because I need to see him play. <laughs> I just want to see how he yeah. plays. You know what I mean? His effect on the game, his confidence level. Um, I'll judge it by All Star break. Hey, that's Ooh. not fair. <laughs> Uh, speaking of bigger news, I guess we did talk about it last week, so we'll talk about it here. Uh, LeBron James signs an extension. Uh, he was also a big uh, flag. I don't know if, you know, there's a lot of talk about Bronny. Is Bronny going to get be able to get into the draft? Is, is LeBron want to play with Bronny? Will he, you know, leave and trade for a team? Nope. Uh, all, all questions have been answered. LeBron James signs an extension with the Lakers. I think it's a two-year extension. LeBron going forward. With Two years. I mean, good for him, man. He deserves to get paid, right? Yeah, it's unfortunate that had a terrible season last season. But, hey, as LeBron James, he's going on his potentially last few years in the league, and he's still playing at a high level. That's high level. It's still top 10 player, possibly even five. Um, He's just that much of a game changer, and he deserves the money. I mean, of course. Like, he, he did win him a ring, um, and – you know, you, you can't look at what happened last year, right? You just got to learn it just from it. And honestly, anything would be stupid to give him up. So to say he's not worth that much, you're crazy. doesn't matter who you are, right? You can say it's an outlandish amount of money. Uh, but shout out to LeBron. Congrats, LeBron. I think he has the most earnings ever um, in an NBA career uh, based off his contracts. So that's an amazing accomplishment as well. Now, uh, the other part of the question, if he does want to play his son, he has, you know, vocally mentioned it a couple of times. He was asked that, that question. He do intend, he does intend to play with his son uh, when he gets drafted. And I believe, what, two, three years maybe? I don't know if he's a junior yeah. in high school. He still has to play senior year. He has to play at least one year in the NBA, right? It's one, not two, right? So one the league, and, uh, and the NCAA. Yeah. The league currently has you have to be 19 to get drafted. But there is a conspiracy theory that LeBron James was trying to influence Adam Silver to changing the age limit to lower it back to 18, to lower it down to 18, because then that would make Bronny available. Wow. So there was a theory that keep his options open that draft Bronny Silver lower the age to 18. LeBron would transfer to whatever team that he played. But it seems like with this LeBron signing, it seems like all the rumors of Westbrook and Anthony Davis and LeBron meeting up and saying, oh, I, we love each other. I love you. No, I love you more. <laughs> no, I, I, it seems like all the because LeBron has extended. I love you. So, I love you. All right, yo, so check this out. I think all the rumors... So look, do the math, do the math, right? If if Bronny's in his junior year, he still has to play senior year, he still has to play one year of college. He's a contract I to. He knows what's up. So by the end of the two years with the Lakers, when his son gets drafted, he'll have the option to go wherever his son. He already made the money in, in this last two years. After that, I think he's going to take a, a veteran minimum and just go with whatever team uh, his son gets drafted to because they're obviously not going to be able to afford him. Uh, so I think that's well, the plan. The real question is, does Bronny want to play with his dad? 
that's a tough question. If I was him, I wouldn't. Fuck that. I'm not. Yo, I and, wouldn't want to play with him. He's already. Year, he already playing. probably is a hard ass on the court. Like you want to play with your dad, like that. Oh. And then you're probably going to get dogged this whole time because it's like you're already getting dogged because the only reason why you made it to the league is because your dad's LeBron James. And now, like, the only reason why you're on this team is because your dad's LeBron James. And, like, I, I, if I was him, I wouldn't want to play with him Yo, just for that. You know what? That now, that you mentioned that, now that you mentioned that, that could highly benefit his, his draft stock when he's, when he's going to enter the draft. Because knowing that LeBron will want to play with him, he might shoot up earlier in the draft just so uh, the team could potentially get LeBron there late in his career uh, to play for them. Well, we'll end it there for NBA. Let's go to our final topic. Probably the craziest sports news that happened this weekend was... Kamar Usman versus Leon Edwards, two. A huge upset. A huge upset. I saw the match. Um, Gabe said he saw the highlights. I don't know how much you saw, JoJo. But um, we'll take it away with Gabe. Gabe, what were, what were your thoughts? I mean, based on what I saw, it seems like uh, Edwards might have won that first. I would say Usman. I was dominating the rest of it, but obviously, you see it. No, we're, we're losing game. We're losing oh, game. You lasted no. so long. <laughs> you lasted so long. The first 50 we're minutes. Losing game. I think that was a record. <laughs> That's a record for Gabe. Anyways, um, I'll go with my thoughts while Gabe figures this thing out and hopefully he bounces back. But um, yeah, crazy. Like Gabe was saying, first round uh, looked like Leon Edward just eked out a, a win there out of the first round. But then the, the next four rounds, um, he was just getting dominated. He was getting taken to the ground constantly. It was kind of a boring fight, but that's. It's a typical Usman fight. Like it's super boring. Um, he he pins guys to the fence. He takes pop shots. He takes them down. And that was pretty much the whole fight. It was pretty much what I expected. Leon Edwards is a little bit more of a striker, but people were saying that he was really working on his defense and his takedown defense, and he was supposed to be um, a pretty decent match for Usman, um, but it ended up not really being that way. And then out of nowhere, with like man, I don't know, Gabe, if you know how much time was left. But I think there's about a minute and a half left or something in the final round. And then Leon Edwards has this left kick that just absolutely drops Usman to the ground. And he is just out cold. I was in disbelief. I was in disbelief. Um, I couldn't believe it. Like, obviously, it's MMA and things like that happen. Um, But... I, you just didn't expect it. He, he, Usman's never really been caught sleeping like that, and he just – he wasn't even really caught. It's just the, the sheer power in that kick, especially to exert that much force in a kick like that after you've just been, like, battered for five rounds, being pinned for five rounds against somebody like Usman, and for him to release, like, that sheer power in that kick to knock him out cold, before, yeah, man. It, it's impressive, yeah. and it's crazy. Um, and that's just the nature of the sport. You could be losing the whole time, but all it takes is one punch. It takes yep. one punch, one K, and it's it's over. Um, it's clearly going to be another match. Um, I think Usman Usman wins the next match, gets the belt back. Um, obviously, like unless he can strike lightning twice, I don't see it happening. Usman was just the better fighter. He just got caught, and not only did uh, Leon Edwards win the belt, but he also halted and stopped Kamar Usman from tying the all-time uh, win streak that is currently being held by Anderson Silva. If Usman won, he would have tied him and, uh, and for his undefeated streak, but he just lost. So the GOAT still remains the, the GOAT, and he's still up there and still untouched. And until somebody else, which is going to be a long time from now, until somebody else can crack that record, it's going to be his. But it looks like Gabe might be back. Gabe, give me your thoughts. Possibly the same thing. Like, nobody 
I want to see this fight, Julian. You're saying last time that Edwards hadn't fought since what, like 2000? They haven't fought together since what? what 2015. 2000, 2015. And also, so, Leon Edwards was in, undefeated going into that. They were both undefeated. Uh, Leon Edwards hasn't lost a fight since that fight in 2015. Wow. Wait, damn. That was um, a match in the making are, for years. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Shit. That's, that's damn. Yeah. So they faced each other last, 2015, and both went undefeated since? Well, Usman, yeah, was undefeated even before that. Um, and then Leon Edwards went undefeated because Leon Edwards lost the first match. Yeah. Um, Damn. And he 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 went undefeated since then. And then Usman's good, man. He's good. He's good. I mean, I, I think thought, this kind of amount of times. I mean, I thought yeah, that get... turn the corner. I thought that you would see more striking, like as a stand up. Like, we know his fight, like Julian said. His Stomp your toes. He's gonna hold you. Uh, get cheap shots. Better stand-up game. His last match, the, the one he wanted to win the belt. Uh, and like I said it really was. I don't think anybody in the community is rooting for Edward. Deserving fighter, and like this just, just makes for. I think this makes the sport more interesting. And title more interesting that they're actually you know this is actually an interesting. They don't want to set up so. Uh, Jojo, I don't know uh, how you feel going forward. Are you still like, are you interested? In we missed the question, Gabe. <laughs> we I'm got pretty it. much. <laughs> I'm pretty much. I think he. I think he was pretty much asking, like, are you are you are you still interested in like Usman and how he's going to continue if he's going to get that belt back. Oh no, he's for sure going to get the belt back. I mean, we we've seen this countless amount of times, right? In fights, like obviously any. Anything is possible. No one's invincible, right? Uh, he had the you know, heart of a champion going in last. Well, it was the last minute when he when he got that knockout. Um, even Julian, you and I used to wrestle. So, hey man, you you hit the third period. Someone's down four or five points. They're gonna go for that big throw. They're gonna risk it all. They're gonna go for that for that suplex or that you know. Yeah, you had no choice. Yeah, exactly. So they're gonna they're gonna get the two um, for the takedown and, and and three or some back points. Uh, for that hip toss and Usman, not that he was complacent or anything. Uh, like you said, just unfortunately got caught lacking at the end, man. Uh, you know, you try to run the time down and, that, and that's what happens. It was right when they broke apart too. Like Herb Dean finally broke him apart and he just got fucking slacked. Like, he just got slacked. but yeah. Um, I don't know if you want to roll on with some baseball talk without Gabe since he's pretty much uh, – or you want to save it for next week. Um, I mean, check this, right? We got to mention it because it just dropped today. The biggest thing I wanted to bring up about the MLB, guys. So, for the first time ever uh, in, in, in the interleague era, all 30 teams are going to play one another in a season, next season. So, every team – will play each other next season. I never understood why they never did that in the first place. There's 160 games and 30 teams. Like, why couldn't you play each other, like, a whole, the yeah. whole field? And then you can still play your division, like, five times, however much well, you listen, want. <laughs> and that's exactly the numbers I'm going to get into with um, them playing each other in the division. So, you know, it's obviously for more variety. Um, and look, man, like, check us here. I'm a Yankee fan. I got to wait every two years to see the Yankees coming to town over here in Miami. Like, so me as a fan, this is definitely beneficial. Imagine all the other teams. I want to see these big name teams coming to their hometown and obviously bring attendance there. Now, if you're so heavy on your, just your division every year in and out, you know, you're going to, as a fan, probably get sick of seeing the same teams unless you have that history uh, with a rivalry uh, with one of those teams in your division. Um, I don't know how you feel about that, Julian. Well, also, from a competition standpoint, you want a variety. You know, you want to be able to have some reference point when you go to the playoffs of like if you match up with this team again. And also just like to challenge yourself, you know, like you keep on playing the same teams over and over again. Like like the Mets, for example, you're going to play the Phillies, the Marlins and the um, the Nationals over and over. Like yeah. the, you, you, you want to play some more AL teams, 
you want to play like your Red Sox more often. Um, I'm pretty. They always do a Subway Series every year, though, right? The yeah, they actually that, just that's had it in. We just we won. We swept the series. Uh, these last two games, so we made it up for early on yeah. in the season when the Mets swept. And us. Then, so, real quick, with yeah, the numbers I was telling much, you, so each, yeah. each team will play 52 games against their division opponents, which is a decrease from 76. So you play your division. 76 games out of the 160 game season. That's that's, that's a ridiculous. lot of games. And a lot that's of that factors in your playoff. You got to win your division to secure your spot in the postseason. Um, and now they even expanded the wild card. So I think beginning, I think it's this season where they expanded from two it's this uh, season. teams yep. to three teams into the wild card. Yeah, I mean, t- that's... 70 is a lot. That's that's ridiculous. That's too much. Um, I, I mean, I get that you want to win your division. And you want to make divisions important. You don't want to make it useless like it is in basketball. But, I mean, even like that percentage, like football, is not bad. I mean, like, you know, okay, you play a team twice. And so, like, six of your games, well, I guess it's about the same more I think about it. No, I think it's still a little bit less from percentage. Either way, regardless, I think it's too much. I mean, I think having two series – is plenty like, you know, two series for each team, each team, which, and maybe like, I don't know how many games in a series. Uh, Usually three. Max yeah. Four I mean, in a series. Um, and there's, there's team five teams and, and there's another five league. It's usually two game series. So, yeah. And you're talking five teams in a division and, I don't know. I don't know how to work it out. I'm not good at math. No, <laughs> but like I think I think 50 games in your division is solid. I think that's 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 really good. You're talking about 30 30 something percent. Um and then like you said, yeah, I mean make it more interesting like you can see like every team. Like that'd be cool. Obviously like you're always going to have like the ones that they always, like you said like the Subway series. Um you're always going to have the the Windy City uh I forgot what they call it the the chicago showdown or whatever it is yeah. like and then you have the battle of los angeles but right. like but yeah. uh, you know yeah. I, I think people, i think you can yeah, establish I, I some like both. yeah and you yeah, i think yeah, you can establish some little some rivalries too really play, yeah and you can establish like little rivalries that wouldn't have happened beforehand like maybe it's just like one of those natural born rivalries that just kind of happens and you didn't mean to like It'd be cool to see maybe like having a Tampa play Marlins more often. And like you can create like a a Florida rivalry. Like, you know, you can kind of do that. Maybe same thing with Texas. You can do more of a Texas thing. Like they definitely need to switch it up. Um, I agree with that. But yeah. Well, that'll wrap it up. That was the big news for baseball um, that I wanted to mention today. They're going to play judge. every <laughs> single team next season. Something to look forward to. So check out the big name teams, your favorite teams that usually won't come to town. Now you get a chance to see them next season. Yeah. Too bad uh, Gabe couldn't finish it. His McDonald's uh, timer for his hour of Wi-Fi ran out. So he had to leave. But anyways, Georgia, where can they find the podcast? Real Fans Podcast. Find us on our Instagram. Like, comment, share. We're going to be posting up some videos soon. We got more content for you guys where we love the interactions. Uh, Twitter, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and uh, Facebook, right? I believe that's everywhere. That's yeah, it, guys. and uh, anywhere we get podcasts. We're going to be live streaming. We got some plans going on for our fantasy draft NFL. We got some content coming your way on that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll end it there. Episode 62.